Well, I, I guess we're going to come back then to if we really can't, as yet, for sure, identify those six patients who really will benefit from radiation and exclude the others, uh, we're going to be giving radiation to some patients who may not, looking backwards, have needed it. So how do you optimize radiation therapy if you're going to give it to everybody so as to minimize the risks? Let me make one more point about those six. Th those six patients still may have a chance at being cured subsequently. So what, what makes this conversation even more complex is that Hodgkin lymphoma is one of the uncommon cancers where if we don't cure somebody the first time around, we have additional therapies that can cure people the second time around. And I would emphasize that the important uh, outcome in such a study like the one that was described by Craig, the RAPID study, isn't necessarily the four-year outcome, but the 10 and 20-year outcomes when it is our fear that although radiation therapy may cure six additional patients at four years, the toxicities of the radiation therapy may end up causing problems 10 and 20 years down the line. So I think that this is the type of data that's going to have uh, be the source of a lot of debate over the next few years, but we all hope that long-term follow-up will really define what the impact is on those six patients. So this is a great kind of discussion to have, isn't it? We're curing people, we just want to cure them with the least collateral damage. No, I, I don't want you to think that um, I'm a person who avoids radiation therapy in my patients. I'm actually a proponent of using radiation therapy. And I think that the way to think about it is uh, when we were all young, uh, or not even around some you of the mean panelists, last year or case. when some of the panelists who weren't <laughs> even born, um, we gave what was called extended field radiation therapy. And that radiation therapy field would imply, if you think you're just about a suit of armor, you know, the mantle field, which is, you know, from, from the ears down to the belly button, and then all the way down to the groin. So a full radiation therapy field. And this is the long-term side effects that we saw pretty much in the 90s from treatment that was given in the 60s. Um, the, long the side effects that we see now uh, from radiation therapy are patients who were treated pretty much in the 80s, who were treated with um, about half of that amount of radiation therapy. Now the radiation therapists have actually done a much better job at policing their mess than the chemotherapists. And I'm sure they're thrilled with the way you uh, just described it. Um, well, they're supposed to have a fun conversation. <laughs> um, and they've actually reported their long-term side effects with, uh, 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 very carefully. In, in, in the current climate, where we used to give extended field radiation therapy, we're, go we're going to be give what's, be what's called involved site radiation. Okay. Which meaning if you have a lymph node underneath your axilla, Instead of radiating your axilla and entire chest, now only the ax axillary region is going to be radiated. Will the consequences of long-term side effects be the same with that amount of radiation therapy when you know, some of the members of the panel will be retired? I don't know. Uh, but one would argue it should be less. All right.